Today I wanted to talk about the role of the various layers of muscles that are in the uterus that help the baby to be born safely and also help to keep the mother safe during labour and birth. And to do that, I'm going to use my favourite teaching aid. So this smock shows a baby in the ideal position for labour. Um, his he's head down, so this is that's the most important thing. His chin is on his chest. So this part of his head, the occiput, is forming a nice wedge against the cervix. And he's on the left-hand side and slightly to the front. So that's the ideal position. And this baby's head is nicely engaged down into the pelvis. Here are the, is, is the drawings of the pelvic bones. And then there is a layer that goes over that to show the different types of muscles that are in the uterus. And the first layer of muscles that do the first amount of work are the longitudinal muscles and they run from the cervix up and over the top of the uterus and back down to the cervix, so up and over. And in response to pulses of oxytocin that is produced in the pituitary and goes into the mother's bloodstream, in response to those pulses, the, uh, these muscles contract. And each time they contract, like other muscles, they shorten. But unlike other muscles, when they relax, they don't relax to their original length. They are slightly shorter. And then the next time they contract and relax, they're a little bit shorter again. And with many, many contractions over however many hours a woman's labor is, they slowly, slowly, slowly pull the cervix open from zero to 10 centimeters. And in terms of um, the baby's head, zero to 10 centimeters is from the cervix being closed, to the cervix being pulled up to around the baby's ears. Um, during that process of pulling the cervix up and open, the muscles then bunched up at the top and that forms almost like a powerful piston and it helps to push the baby out uh, through the now open cervix, down through the vagina and out ending in the birth of the baby and up for skin to skin. Skin to skin with the mother is now protective. Not only is it really beneficial for the baby, but it really helps to protect the mother because it helps to control blood loss in the, in the next parts of labor. So the uterus now continues to contract down and um, it gets, as it gets smaller, there isn't enough room for the placenta to stay on the inside. So it gets kind of peeled off and uh, comes out through the cervix and out through the vagina. And there is always some blood loss at that stage. And as the uterus contracts down more and more, these diagonal muscle fibers here, they form almost like natural clamps or living clamps, living ligatures. And they help to seal off blood vessels so that the mother only loses the normal amount of blood rather than it becoming an abnormal amount. And having her baby skin to skin is very protective for her and it helps to prevent or to reduce the, resist, the risk of postnatal, uh, postnatal hemorrhage or postpartum hemorrhage. Now that the baby has been born and the placenta has come out the, and the uterus is continuing to crack, contract down as it will do for the following six weeks until it becomes the pre-pregnant size of about, about the size of a pear. The circular muscle fibres here at the base of the uterus, they come into play. So the uterus has to remain slightly open so that the blood rich uh, lining of the uterus that has built up over the nine months or the 40 weeks of pregnancy, that that is able to be shed in the form of lochia, which is like a heavy period for the first couple of weeks after birth. But um, it would be unsafe for the uterus to be too open and because because that would uh, increase the risk of infection. So those circular muscle fibers act to keep the uterus safe, safe from infection. What's really interesting about these muscles is that they also act under the effect of adrenaline at an earlier stage in labor. And this comes from an evolutionary um, protective mechanism whereby if cave woman was birthing her baby and she heard the roar of the saber-toothed tiger that these circular muscle fibers would react uh, in response to her fight or flight response and she'd be able to run away and continue her labor later in a safe place. But these days 
uh, we're not going to be chased by saber toothed tigers, but there might be other stressors. They might be emotions or thoughts or perhaps stressful events in labour. And that can then affect the progress of labour because adrenaline acting on these circular muscle fibres stops the good work of the longitudinal muscle fibres. So it stops the dilating or slows it down. And worse again, the presence of adrenaline um, makes the sensations feel more painful. So it's a really um, lose-lose situation, less progress in labour, and it feels more painful. And that's why there's such a strong rationale for using relaxation techniques, whatever works for you, whether it's breathing techniques, massage, positions, of course, always help to stay relaxed in labour so that adrenaline won't interfere and won't activate the circular muscles and will allow the other muscles to do their thing, whether it's the uh, pulling the cervix open or helping to push the baby out. I hope that helps.